Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you and to be able to do church together with you this morning. Um, get your Bible, get your journal, get ready to take some notes because it's going to be a good one. Um, they're all good. They're all good. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right before we get started with worship, I just wanted to say I love seeing your faces in the new intro video. Yes. It is so fun and exciting. Um, it's I said it's one of my favorite parts. And if you haven't sent one in, please, please, please send one in. We want to um, see you in that video as well as we say good morning to each other in the morning. So let's get ready for some worship. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice,
church time. Good morning, church. It's time to worship. Good morning, Good morning Lighthouse. Mm. Needs more sugar. Good morning, Lighthouse family. I got my coffee brewed, ready to worship and hear the word. Good, Good morning, morning, church. church. Ready for Are worship. worship. Are you guys ready for worship? Are you ready to praise the Lord? <gasps> ready for, for worship. worship. Good morning, Lighthouse. I've got my coffee. Let's go to church. Ready, Ready for, for worship. worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Hi. Hi. Good morning, church. We miss you. We are ready to worship. Hey, church. You ready to do life together online? Have you ever seen an artist completely focus on their work? Every single move that they do is intentional. In their mind, they have this final outcome, this final piece that they are working towards. They, they use their hands intentionally. They mold, they shaped. They're building towards this masterwork, this piece of beautiful art. See, that's our relationship with the Father. He has us in his hands and he's shaping us and molding us to what he has in his mind. We are the artwork of God. And I want you to hear me. We are not a mistake. We are not uh, disqualified from being his artwork because of our past. Yeah. See, we are his masterpiece, no matter what. We're, we're focusing on Jeremiah chapter 18 today. And it's this, this beautiful image of where Jeremiah is called by God to go down to the potter's house. To see this artist work and shape this pottery. And, and the story behind this scripture is the people, the believers, the chosen people of Israel are lost from God. They, they decided that they were no longer going to focus on God and they were going to take other paths. And God illustrates their lives as if they are this lump of clay in the hands of the Father. So let's look at this. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will announce my words to you. Then I went down to the pot potter's house, and there he was, making something on the wheel. 
but the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel, as it pleased the potter to make. Today we're, we're continuing in our series called Faith Check. It's, a, it's an entire series based on faith through the lens of the book of Jeremiah. We'll be in Jeremiah the entire time. We'll jump in and out a little bit, but primarily Jeremiah. And it's all about faith. Today's message is entitled Forming Faith. Forming Faith. And I, I want to look at the illustrations, the, the different pieces of the scripture on the potter's wheel. See, first thing we have is the clay. The clay. We need to understand in this story, we are not the potter. We are not the father shaping the world. We are the clay. And, and the thing I love about the story is it has this image of the father reaching down and intentionally touching this clay to shape it and form it. And then there's this moment where it says the clay was marred, the clay was spoiled, the clay failed in the father's hands, in the potter's hands. Not that the potter ruined the clay, but the clay messed up. The clay folded in on itself, whatever happened, this symbolizes sin. This symbolizes uh, failing, right? And it says that the father had the clay and as he was shaping it, it failed in on itself. But then there's this beautiful moment where it says, so the father reshaped the clay again. The father didn't throw away the clay and start with a new clay. And I think that's one of the most uh, biggest things that sticks out to me as a believer. That just because I mess up in my life, the father doesn't throw me away and choose someone else. He intentionally says, no, I have a purpose for your life. And I'm going to reshape you in it. Just because there's mistakes, just because something happens, doesn't disqualify you for your whole life. So the father goes down to the clay and shapes. And if, if you don't know how clay is shaped, the clay has to sit on this wheel. And then the father, the potter, held, holds his hands on it. And so the, the second image, first is clay, second being the father in his hands. I know I'm, I've mentioned this a couple times already today. But it's the hands of the father. And the father symbolizes not just the hands that are shaping this clay. But we need to understand Jeremiah 29, 11, later on we'll get there. It says, I know the plans I have for you. So as the potter is shaping this clay, it's not just abstractly creating something new that just we'll see what happens. Actually, there's intentionality behind it. He's saying, I have plans for you before you were formed. See, this, this brings Jeremiah 29, 11 to full light in Jeremiah 18. He, he's forming us, but before he's forming us, he has plans for us. You know, some of us are a coffee mug. Some of us are a water. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he has plans for us as he's shaping us. There's a lot going on with the Father. He has plans. He's intentionally taking his time. This is why we, we don't just get an instant answer. This is why God isn't Santa Claus giving us a gift right away and then bouncing out. He's saying, I am intentionally shaping you. And it takes time. And then the, the next one down the list, we have the clay, we have the potter, and then we have the wheel. So the, the, the potter works with a tool. He has to take the clay and he has to set this lump of clay on top of this wheel and it spins. See, the, the potter doesn't just hold a clay and, and crimps it and, and, and prods it and pokes it and shapes it in his hand. No, he actually uses a third-party tool, the stone, and it's spinning. And, and this actually represents situations in life. These are frustrations. These are circumstances. These are tools that God uses, uh, uses to shape us. The, the wheel that's spinning chaotically fast. As the, as the clay is spinning around. Though I, I feel like areas of my life are spinning out of control, that's actually God using a tool to shape and form me into the masterwork art piece that I am. And we can't discount that. 
And the, the interesting thing about the, the wheel is we got to remember that the wheel, we are supposed to be connected to this throughout the entire time that God is shaping us. And the danger that we can get into is we think that life situations like this wheel are here to harm us and kill us and, and ruin us. And so we want to abandon that tool. And God's like, what are you doing? Yeah, I know it's hard. I, I placed you here. I'm intentionally crafting you. And if you hop off, I can't finish forming you. Yeah. And, and I really think a lot of believers, when they come to trials and, and tests and all these different things, they don't see that it's a tool from God to shape them into his artwork. They see it as a devil showing up to kill them. And they're like, oh, I'm bouncing out. Ooh, things got tough in this church. I'm out. Things got hard in this relationship. I'm out. It's like, well, hold on. If we would trust the process, we would see an outcome that is worthy of God's artwork. See, our, our goal, where faith comes in, is placing our faith in the Father. That we need to stay planted during the process planted during the process. Would you write that in a comment down below? Planted during the process. Planted during the process. Right now, uh, I want to take a, just a moment. This is something we do in our church. We are a firm believer in doing life together. And right now during uh, social distancing and corona times, we're doing something unique where we can still do life together digitally. In the comments below, what I want to do is, is do life together and I want you to take a moment and answer, how do you stay planted during the process? How do you stay connected? How do, you, how do you realize, how do you kick over that this circumstance, this issue, this whatever is a tool from God? So how do you stay planted during your season? And I, I want you to answer this genuinely because there are people that are just going through the comments and, and they're, they're a little shy, they're a little nervous, they, they might be hesitant to actually put a comment down, but they need this encouragement from you. Mm -hmm. And that opens up the windows and, and, and opens up uh, the drawbridge, if you will, for someone to connect to you and say, hey, how, how did you do that? How did you, I'm, I'm going through something similar right now. How did you stay planted during the process? So let's jump down for a couple minutes, answer. Don't just answer and bounce out, but reply to someone else too. Let's do life together in the comments.
planted during the process. This is so critical. We need to have our faith on God in order to stay planted. So this whole chapter, chapter 18, is about these people that put their faith off, pulled their faith off of God and put it onto idols and people and situations and jobs and relationships. They literally, instead of having their faith on God during this process, they were hurt, they discarded their faith and put it on other people of saying, I don't think I'm going to be able to make this paycheck. I don't think I'm going to be able to make this bill. I need to work harder at this job rather than having faith in Jesus that he's doing something. It's totally relatable. In the situations of life, we need to trust God and have faith on him in these moments. So we have, we have the, the first couple things going on here. We have the father whose hands are shaping us, who has his mind on how we're forming. We are the clay, the, the stone, the wheel is, is the situations of life. It's the tool that is, God is using to shape us. And then we have the water, right? This, this water that the potter has to dip his hands down into and keep shaping this clay, because if it gets too dry, it becomes too brittle and just cracks. It can't withstand the Father's hands of correction and molding and shaping. Mm, that's good. The water is Jesus. That's, that's who it is. Mm-hmm. See, the Father utilizes Jesus in our heart to keep us moldable and shapeable. Because the weight of the Father's hands without Jesus will destroy us. We can't withstand the full impact of God shaping us without the mercy, grace, love that is Jesus. It's crazy. Have have you ever seen a dry lake bed? There's cracks everywhere. It is evident that water used to be present. Now it's just dry and desolate. If your faith feels dry and desolate and cracking, it might be because you don't have the freshness of Jesus in your life at this moment. Maybe you haven't asked Jesus into your heart. Maybe you haven't had a relationship with Jesus in a long time and you just feel dry. It's in these moments that we need the Father to bring Jesus into our lives and we need to adapt and and say, Jesus, I need a freshness of you in my life today. I'm feeling dry. I'm feeling like this dry riverbed just all cracked. And, and it's, it's this weird feeling that when we lack the word, when we lack our Bible, when we don't have Jesus in our life daily, we can feel dry like that riverbed. And it's the same concept on the potter's wheel, right? The father has to keep dipping his hands into the water and pouring over the clay over and over and over. It's this freshness. It's this, this situation where he has to do it over and over. Just like we need daily to get the word of God into our lives. We need to get Jesus into our lives daily so we don't dry out. And the the interesting thing about pottery is the before and after. See, before it's formed, while it's being formed, while God is molding it, he's continuously adding water onto it to reshape and, and reform. But then on the flip side, pottery after it's been glazed, it comes out, it intentionally holds that water. And that's our relationship with Jesus. He's constantly refreshing us and renewing us, but then he also sits within us so that we can give fresh water to those around us. And it's this interesting dynamic and illustration that this potter's wheel has. And then the other thing that you have, this habit in the potter's house, is the kiln. The kiln is where you, you fire the pottery. You have to put it in this, this crazy amount of heat. And you also have to do it twice. You were, Patty was telling me about this earlier. This blew my mind. You have to take this clay and put it in this, the, the kiln once to fire it. And it, sh- it moves it from this pliable clay into this porous pottery. And then you have to paint it with glaze and fire again to seal off the porous and for it to be able to retain the water or the liquid or whatever you put in there. 
See, the kiln represents the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's, it's the moment where the first time when the Holy Spirit interacts with us and he deals with us daily, he's like the kiln. Because when, when the pottery, the clay goes into the kiln, the first fire is actually removing all of the impurities. Everything that shouldn't be inside that clay is brought to the service, surface and burned off. That's what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He points out things that we need to deal with. And then the second firing is like the adornment. It's the painting. It goes through this beautification process of painting and making it look precious and gorgeous. It's the final product of what the Father had in his mind. The Holy Spirit finalizes it in our lives. And I like the last step because not only does the, the clay turn into this porousy uh, pot, if you will, before the final, this in-between step as, as they're painting, it's still porousy, meaning any external moisture or foreign object can still be absorbed in, right? It's like the baby Christians, right? Anything that they see online or see this, and they're still allowing all this stuff to come in without even fact-checking it against the word of God to see if it's true and accurate. But then the second firing happens. It's this extra step of when we start adorning and placing on all the armor of God. Of saying, look at what I'm becoming. Look at what the Holy Spirit is placing on me. And then we allow the Holy Spirit to do that. It removes the porous of off the pottery and it removes the porous off our lives. And we no longer absorb external factors that want to influence us away from the word of God. And it's exactly what these people needed in this chapter. They were taking in all these other idols and all these other things that people were saying and adding it into their lives. And God's like, what are you even doing? You're supposed to be like this pottery where you get fired off with this glaze so you don't absorb anything outside of what I gave you. You need to be shut off of external influences that are distracting you away from my love, my peace, my kindness, my goodness, all the fruits, right? Man, the Holy Spirit is transforming us. It's it's all the fruit that he's giving us that we need to take in. Peace, the kindness, the lovingness, the joy, all of that needs to be part of our lives and, and everything else we need to be able to discern might not be for us. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing in our lives. So how do we keep our faith on God in order to grow? Right? How do we keep our faith on this pedestal, on this wheel in order to stay put How do we trust the process? How do we stay planted during the process? What is it that we need to do in order to interact with the full trinity of God? What what is it? Do you remember Yahoo? Yahoo's still around. But did you know why they failed to grow? They were like the number one superpower of the internet. They were like the portal, the email, the everything was Yahoo. Like even I was reading in 2002, they were going to buy Google for $5 billion. But then they said that the cost was too much and the risk was too great. So they backed out. They would have owned Google, right? And then, and then some years later, 2006, they had positioned themselves to buy Facebook for $1 billion. But again, they thought the price was too much and the risk was too great. I really think someone is failing to grow in their relationship with God because to you, the cost is too much and the risk is too great, just like Yahoo. Right, you you think the cost of discipleship is too much. The cost of relationships is too much. The risk of losing out on your reputation. The risk of what what happens if this happens. The risk of, of what if Jesus doesn't show up when I pray and I ask and I call on him to do this. Your cost and risk in your mind 
is too much. And because of that, you are failing to grow. You are failing to stay attached to this wheel as the Father spins you around like this, uh, our, this pottery wheel. It is, are things too much in your mind? The cost is too much. Is, is the cost of attending church service weekly too much to you? Is the cost of reading your Bible too much to you? Is the risk of opening up and being genuine and doing life together too much to you? Is the risk of doing next steps in your life too much? That, that is why you are failing to grow in your faith. So how do we stay planted? How do we use faith to stay planted on the potter's wheel? How do we get past this cost and this risk? Because obviously it's evident that Jeremiah 18 was solely written because these people failed. They failed to grow in their faith. The cost was too much. The risk was too great. And they didn't do it. And and God actually lays out in, in verse 15 why. So if we look at what they didn't do, we can do the opposite. And that's how we grow our faith. That's how we stay connected. That's what we're doing here. That is how we form our faith to stay connected to God through the process. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 15. For my people have forgotten me. Circle that. They burn incense to worthless gods. Circle that. And they have stumbled from their ways, from the ancient paths to walk in bypaths, not on a highway. God is looking at his people and says, his people have left the road for a path. See, he's comparing these two pathways. One's a road and one's a path. And he's obviously laying out what a road and a path is back then when this was written. And the only difference is the cost and the risk involved. So the road back then, when you point out the road and you compare it to a path, a path was actually just a simple path that forms because a few people have just walked on that path enough times to so it clears away the bushes or the plants or whatever. It's still dirt. It still gets muddy after it rains. It still gets people stuck after time. But then you have the road. And I, I loved researching what this was. Paving was an expensive undertaking. In Babylon, dirt and gravel were first used to build up the road bed. Then bricks were laid in asphalt to form a foundation. Then limestone slabs were laid on top and the crevices again were filled with asphalt. There was a cost to laying this foundation. Right? This took time. This took energy. It took people. A foundation was built. So we need to stop avoiding the cost and stop fearing the risk. If you feel dry, if you feel desolate, if you feel like you failed, if you feel like whatever is happening, I want to challenge you. Get over the cost in your mind of what's preventing you from jumping into this full relationship with the Father through Jesus. This fear of allowing the Holy Spirit in your life to reveal what needs to be purified, mm -hmm. to reveal what needs to be sealed off in your life so you stop being influenced by the world. So there's a direct cost and fear that is preventing you from growing, just like Yahoo. So, we need to hyper-focus on two things found in verse 15. The first one, people have forgotten me. I told you to circle that. People have forgotten me. So what's the opposite? Number one, know Jesus personally. We need to remember Jesus. And I'm not just talking once a month, and I'm not just talking once a week on Sunday, or when it's convenient yes. to show up to church. Yes. See, there's a cost to following Jesus. It's saying, you know what? I might feel uncomfortable. I might feel tired, but there is no way 
that I'm being stopped from showing up and hearing the word of God. There is no way that it's, it might cost me time to open my Bible daily, but I can overcome that cost. See, that's what's going to form your faith to stay planted and stay connected. It's so we're able to overcome the cost and actually build a relationship with Jesus. Pay the cost of time in reading and discerning. Pay the cost in pride of discipleship. I think this is one of the hardest costs to overcome. Right? The longer you're in church, the longer you're a Christian, the longer you're a believer, a sense of pride of I know it all, I've seen it all, I've heard it all creeps up and you are unwilling to deal with that pride, that cost of pride, to show up to a step one believer's class. Because God will speak every single time. Overcome the pride of showing up to our weekly Bible study on Thursdays. Man, are you willing to pay the cost of digging deep into your word, into your Bible? If you showed up this Thursday, Right, if you have several days right after church, you can deep dive into this passage and get more out of it. God will start speaking more depth. You'll be equipped of how you read your Bible and how you take actions on it. You're not going to just be spoon fed Sunday mornings, but you could dig deep into your word. Sign up and show up to our communion nights. Another way to overcome the cost. Well, I'm busy. It's a, thir- it's, a, it's a Wednesday night, like once a month. I just don't have the time. It's 30 minutes. You can make the time. Overcome the cost. There's lots of different ways. Jumping into the weekly next steps. Our church has next steps every single week based on the message. What's one step you can do to further your faith and take an action on this word? We do it every single week. Do something. You know, it's overcoming that fear and that cost that might prevent us. It's, it's building this genuine relationship with Jesus. All of these add to that. They all build into our relationship with Jesus. But it's all wrapped around the word of God and moving forward with it. Faith without works is what? Dead. And if we're not actively engaging our faith and our word of God, it's just dead. It's just nothing. It's just reading. And the second thing in verse 15, it says, burn incense to worthless gods. Burn incense to worthless gods. Number two, worship Jesus always. Burning incense. This is the Hebrew for sacrifice. Right, so this is not just getting out a little incense holder and burning it, and you're like, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm putting this incense before." No, this is much deeper than that. This is saying worshiping anything other than Jesus is what infuriates God in this moment, mm-hmm. because we're saying, "I don't trust your hands to shape me. I need someone or something else." to shape me and I'm going to be so excited and I'm going to say, man, you're doing an awesome job. Wow, this boss, this mentor, this person is shaping me better than God ever could. That's what this scripture is getting at. It's saying, my job, I am so excited. My job is providing the new paycheck. My new job is amazing. I'm able to pay my bills. My new job this, my new job that. God's saying, that's actually worshiping an idol. You fail to realize who got you that job, who lined you up for that interview, who lined you up for that one friend to meet a friend, to meet the boss, to hire you. Mm -hmm. Your God orchestrated and ordained and is worthy of your praise, not your new job, not you winning the lottery to get a new car, not this or that. It's, It's actually God is praiseworthy in everything. And on the flip side, he's praiseworthy not just in the good times, 
but he's praiseworthy. Mm -hmm. When we're on the wheel spinning out of control and we feel like there is no way that we can stay connected because it feels like hell and high water have come and we can't stick to it. Mm -hmm. We praise him. We praise him through thick and through thin, through good, through bad. We praise Jesus always. Mm -hmm. And these people in chapter 18 failed to do that because times got tough and they took their focus off of Jesus. They took their focus off of God and placed it on something else that was helping them. So they thought, and it, it was a failure. They failed to grow. They failed to stick out the cost of worshiping Jesus. Don't, don't be like Yahoo. Don't be like chapter 18 believers. Be you. Focus on worshiping God. Amen? Amen. Man, we need to pay the cost, the time, the energy to worship Jesus. Worship with our hearts. If, if you're sitting here thinking worship is some guitars, some stage equipment, and some microphones, and a platform, and lights, you are sadly mistaken. This is not the worship I'm talking about. Worship that I'm talking about is your heart towards Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's saying, I am worshiping you through serving, through loving, through song, through whatever. It's a heart check. What is your heart towards your God? What, what, what is happening in your heart? You know, I, I am, I don't know, I, I think one of my biggest concerns is that people have stopped worshiping during coronavirus because they think that worship it has to involve a church building and a stage and people leading us. Mm -hmm. It's no, it doesn't. Yeah. There was no guitars and microphones and audio equipment when Jesus was walking around on the earth. It was just worship. Yeah. And we can worship no matter what the circumstance is. Worship it's not only music, but it's also serving. It's helping. It's being kind. It's listening to Jesus and implementing in our lives and saying, because I'm overwhelmed with your love for me, I'm going to share that love with others. I'm going to do this and do that. And that's a form of worship too. And do not mistake a church building as the only place worship can happen. Please, I, I pray that, that not only would you see our worship videos, but you would engage in worship. Mm -hmm. You close your eyes, and not only would you just mouth the words, but you would have your heart reflecting towards God and saying, God, I worship you. I adore you. I love you. Get worship today. Your next step this week. We're doing next steps every week, and they relate to the... Re they um, correspond with the message. And we really want to challenge you to, to take a next step this week. It's get connected. Get connected. Mm -hmm. Connect to your word. Connect to someone you haven't talked to since COVID started. Serve. How are you getting connected? Just like that clay is connected to that wheel. I want you to figure out how are you going to get connected this week? Is it connected to this church to say, you know what? I dropped off the face of the planet. I need to serve. I need to help. I need to do life together. How are you going to get connected? I think for every single person watching, it's going to look a little bit different because it's not just one end all be all kind of thing that we need. That's how we get connected. No, get connected. What is getting connected to you? Is it getting connected to your word because you haven't read in so long? Is it getting connected to worship because you thought worship was a church building? Is it getting connected to people because you just kind of hermited out and you need to start doing life together? What is getting connected to you? Be that clay in the Father's hands. Connected to what the tools that he has spinning you around, shaping you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I pray as, as you're the father over us, shaping us, 
as the Holy Spirit is molding us and making us pliable so that you can correct us, as the Holy, as the Holy Spirit is then in, inside the kiln firing us, I pray that you, we would understand that our faith keeps us connected to you, allowing you, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to interact with us. I pray that we would not take our faith for granted, but that we grow our faith, that we would, we would just connect to you. We wouldn't be lost in the shuffle that is COVID. We continue to grow our faith, God, through this whole series. In your mighty name, amen. You know, during that worship time, uh, the Lord had just reminded me, I, I took a pottery class when I was in college and it is probably hands down my favorite class ever. Um, and one of the things you learn is step one is making sure that your clay is centered on the wheel. Hmm. And um, if it's not centered as you're working it, it gets really wonky. And so your hands start doing this thing. <laughs> And, and the funny thing is sometimes we get off center. We get off center from where the Lord wants us, you know, where he intends for us to be. Mm, that's and the good. beauty of it 
the beauty of it is every time my clay would do that and get off center and I'd get all wonky, um, I had the power, I was in control to recenter, to form it back to where it needs to be. And so, yes, mm -hmm. do That's not good. be afraid to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those areas that you kind of got off centered a little bit and nobody's judging you. That's the, that's the beauty of it, is, is the Holy Spirit doesn't judge you for where you've been, <laughs> for getting all wonky on Him. Um, but the Lord with His loving hands will recenter you. Yeah. And oh, it, it's good. It's so, so it's good. good. So um, I'll leave you with that nugget. <laughs> um, as we go into a time of tithe and offering, uh, you can go to our website and give, go to our giving page and give there. And um, just an update, we are starting moving things from the children's building into the sanctuary. That way we can get going with our project and our dreams come into life. Um, but we do still need help. So if you can help, yeah. we will follow all um, safety protocols necessary for social distancing and mask wearing and all that. Uh, but we do need help just moving that stuff on over. We need the manpower, your muscles. <laughs> um, so please contact us if you are able to, and we can um, set up a time to do that. Contact Pastor Pat and he will um, help you out with that. And then next, um, I hope for those of you who were able to join us for communion last Wednesday, our communion time together, it was such a great time. Yeah. And um, Jay shared a very special word and it was just very encouraging. So do not be dismayed. There will be another one next month, the first Wednesday of every month. So make sure you schedule that in, set an alarm on your phone so you don't forget. Um, and it's just a fun time that we get to hang out and have that family time together. It's, yeah. it's always so good. Uh, next, please, like I said before, send us your intro videos. We want to see that. We want to post them up. We want to have that greeting time together of um, we miss each other in person, but at least we get to have that that little time in the beginning. I always look forward to watching that. I'm always on time to church because I don't want to miss it because I want to watch that. <laughs> it's the best part. <laughs> um, and ways to stay connected. You talked about staying connected here some ways. You sign up for our newsletter and you are in the know of what's going on. Keep, in, keep uh, connected through our social media. We have posts on there um, and we want to hear from you. Don't just be that stalker <laughs> who just scrolls and reads and reads everybody's comments. You know who you are. Um, but engage. Put your comment down so someone else can stalk you. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> and fine, I'm on a roll today. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and finally, it ha we have been leading up to our National Women's Day is today. Woo! Um, and we are going to celebrate by having a women's art night. So that is going to be lots of fun. Uh, send us an email. Contact us through Instagram or Facebook so we can give you that Zoom link so you can hop on and do that. And just so you know ahead of time, you will need either a canvas or you know some thicker heavy duty paper because um, we will be painting um, and you will need black paint for sure and then whatever other colors you have handy or your heart desires uh, to use for that art our, our art tonight so that'll be really fun I'm really looking forward to it people have already let me know like they're so excited and it makes me excited to know you're excited <laughs> so that'll be great and it's for women of all ages so if you have daughters nieces grand daughters um, they can hop on as well. I know London will be there, so that'll be fun for her to see little friends on there with her too. And what time? At 7 p.m. tonight, 7 p.m. Email us so you can get the Zoom link. And I'm looking forward to that. We'll see you guys. Have a wonderful Sunday. We love you, and we hope you are just blessed by the word today, because I know I was. God bless.